these are all boiling water reactors and there's about five barriers between the fuel and the outside world. Uh, the first barrier is the zircaloy cladding on the fuel rods. The uh, second barrier is the pressure vessel, vessel itself. Uh, then beyond the press pressure vessel there are buildings to contain uh, in about two or three shells beyond that. The explosions we saw resulted in damage to the outermost shells, which is basically a civil building in some sense. Uh, it resulted from hydrogen gas, which is formed when the exposed core of the nuclear reactor reacts with the water vapor that's inside the pressure vessel, making hydrogen. The hydrogen has to be vented because the pressure has to be kept manageable inside the pressure vessel and this hydrogen has the potential to explode when it reaches the outside world and that's what we saw happen repeatedly over the past few days. Uh, at this point it's a, it's a management strategy. We want to keep the pressure vessel intact and this means that one has to vent from time to time the steam and gases that are being produced inside the pressure vessel. Uh, there are strategies in place right now to cool them down using seawater. Likely what this means is that neither of these three reactors will ever be usable in the future. There may have been some damage to the fuel rods inside, but as far as I can hear from reputable sources, the pressure vessel itself, which is made up of five inches or so of stainless steel, is still intact and holding, which I think is a blessing for all of us. Definitely, I don't believe it's uh, like a Chernobyl. The Chernobyl one was a reactor that was operating at full power when disaster hit. It was a reactor that was moderated with carbon, which tends to burn rather furiously. It did not have a containment building around it. Uh, there were many, many differences between this reactor, these reactors. Actually, there's 55 of them, and they're all uh, sort of built in this uh, multiple redundancy containment mode.